In this video, we'll be looking at how collaborative learning can benefit EAE learners during the home learning period. Collaborative learning is a form of group learning. However, it is a very specific form of group learning. In collaborative learning, pupils are segmented into groups and are given specific roles to play. Then, the groups work towards a specified goal, such as writing a text together or completion of a larger project. In collaborative learning, different learners might have different information from other members of the group and are thus indispensable to the group. Therefore, if one of the pieces is missing, the jigsaw cannot be completed. Collaborative learning activities can take different forms. One is discussion on a topic. Another is shared tasks. Working collaboratively on a task encourages use of the vocabulary of the curriculum area, and at the same time encourages use of the language of making suggestions, justifying opinions, agreeing and disagreeing. It also gives practice in listening. For instance, working together on a task of ranking different items according to preset criteria requires justifying one's choices, but also listening intently to others' choices. Games, particularly ones with competitive elements, can be very motivational to learners. They will provide opportunities to consolidate and revise curriculum content and allow to practice the language of turn-taking and negotiating. As the name information exchange itself suggests, in these activities, learners need to obtain information they do not have themselves from others. These oral activities provide opportunities for learners to ask questions, ask for more details, and develop listening skills, particularly listening for detail. Collaborative activities are great for EAE learners because they encourage speaking, listening, reading, as learners will need to engage with some reading materials prior to and during the activity, and writing. For instance, learners could be writing a piece of text together. Working with a partner or in a small group allows learners to feel more confident and the language is being used for a meaningful purpose rather than out of context. In particular, collaborative learning promotes explorator talk. In group talk, three types of talk can be present, of which explorator talk is one, and the most desirable one. Disputational talk, here on the left, is the yes it is, no it isn't type of talk. Very little agreement with everyone just stating their own opinions, and little space for constructive dialogue. Cumulative talk, here on the right, is where the conversation is used to share knowledge, but it is done in an uncritical way. Everyone simply accepts what others say. The third is what collaborative learning promotes, exploratory talk. Everyone listens carefully, people ask questions, ideas may be challenged, and reasons are given for statements. Atmosphere of shared purpose and trust prevails. Let us think of a couple of different ways in which we can organize collaborative learning activities during the current home learning phase. Let's start with group or pair discussions. One type of activities is listening triangles. This obviously requires three learners who discuss a topic. One of them is the speaker who explains the topic or presents an opinion on a topic. Another is questioner who listens carefully and asks for further clarification and detail. Finally, note taker observes the process and provides feedback to both the speaker and the questioner. Such discussions can be organized via Skype or Zoom, and Google Docs can be used to take notes with everyone seeing the notes being taken in real time. In talk partners, learners are paired for short discussion activities. They can be selected, chosen randomly, and switched regularly. Here, too, we could use the Skype or Zoom software. Finally, in Think Per Share, two learners prepare a response to a topic or prepare their work and then explain their ideas to their partner. Following this, and they join another pair 
and shared their views. A group conclusion is reached by the end. Again, Skype or Zoom can be used for discussions, each have their own mobile app. And the final conclusion could be recorded via Zoom, which allows recording of any session, and shared on YouTube. It will be, of course, important to consider issues of safeguarding and online security when considering using any software such as Skype or Zoom. And these decisions might be made differently by individual schools, but we hope these are useful ideas nonetheless. Learners can also work on shared tasks such as matching, sorting, and ranking. On the left here, we can see an example from one of our EEL Nexus activities, the Tempest Connect 4, where learners match a character, a quote, and the meaning of a quote. The sorting example on the right, from our EEL Nexus magnetism resource, has learners decide which objects are magnetic, which are not, and which they are not certain of. These types of activities can be carried out by learners via Skype and Zoom, with the actual writing being completed by the learners in real time in Google Docs. Both Skype and Zoom software allow their users to share the screen with other participants so a note taker can easily show to others what they are writing down. There is also the AWW app. This is a free interactive whiteboard, no login required. It allows to type, draw shapes and add images to share with others. So any scanned images from other sources can be included. Please check our video's description on YouTube for the link to this and other websites we mention in this video. As mentioned before, games with competitive elements can be motivational and encourage the use of language of negotiation. One of such games is Bingo. The image on this slide is from our EEL Nexus resource, A Balanced Diet. If you want to create your own, you might want to consider bingobaker.com. Bingo Baker allows you to create your own bingo cards using images from your own computer if you wish. A conversation using Skype or Zoom could then be arranged for the activity itself. Another game easily played is Knots and Crosses. Players have to answer questions about a lesson's topic, and only then are they able to make a mark on the board. If you simply draw and scan a knot and crosses board, this could then be shared on the AWW app collaborative whiteboard, where it is possible to draw the marks with one's mouse. Skype or Zoom can be used, of course, to communicate throughout too. We should also mention that Learning Village, an online software with a very large amount of lessons for EAE learners in the British context, does include activities where learners can play English language games against one another or against anyone in the world currently logged in. We should mention that the program is not free, but it is nonetheless a very effective product directly tailored for EAL learners. We mentioned information exchange activities before. Barrier games are one type of information exchange activities. This one, from our Plants and Animals EAL Nexus resource, shows how this can work. Here, as you will see, there are two learners, A and B. As you can see, learner A does not have the information about cytoplasm and chloroplasts, but learner B does. On the other hand, learner B doesn't have the information about nucleus and vacuoli, but learner A does. Therefore, they need to exchange the information about it so that both of them can complete their diagrams. In a sense, the current, the current home learning situation lends itself perfectly to this type of activity, as they are not supposed to see each other's sheets. In an actual classroom, some students try to cheat by looking at each other's information when they are not supposed to. But now they really can't as they sit in completely different houses. They could communicate via Skype, Zoom or simply mobile phones, only voice calls since they are not supposed to see each other's information. Another type of information exchange activities are jigsaw activities. The example on this slide is from our World War II D-Day set of resources. A group of four learners have to answer the questions. Why is D-Day important? When did it happen? Who took part? What happened? Each learner receives a card with different information about the topic on it, and they need to come together to complete the task. Windows 10's own snipping tool allows you to save any area of one screen into a JPEG graphics file. Each file 
could be a different card for different learners. If teachers assign different letters A, B, C, D, or numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, to different learners for the entire lockdown time, learners would always be able to download a card or a role in an activity with that letter or a number. Again, software such as Skype, Zoom, Google Docs, and AWW app can be used for communication and collaborative work in real time. Learners will need to ask each other questions and justify their choices and suggestions. Such activities tend to promote exploratory talk. Descending into disput disputational or cumulative talk will not allow this task to be successfully completed. The Collaborative Learning Project website is a well-established website with free collaborative learning resources for early years, primary and secondary mainstream classrooms with EAL learners. All the resources promote structured talk and inclusion of EAL learners in the mainstream classroom. It is an excellent resource, well worth familiarizing yourself with. In summary then, to support your learners with EAL using collaborative learning activities, you can arrange for online pair or small group discussions, ask learners to work on shared tasks, engage learners in competitive games, arrange information exchange activities, barrio games and jigsaw activities, and consider using existing online collaborative learning resources. For further CPD opportunities, the Bell Foundation also runs regular webinars. To sign up to upcoming webinars and to view recordings of previous webinars, go to the Bell Foundation website and then EAL Program Training Webinars. You may also be interested in signing up to one of the Bell Foundation online courses running in the coming months, which you can also sign up to on the website. Thank you once again, and please keep up all the great work.